I'm going to tell you what I know about you. Okay. And maybe you can tell them what I know about, what you know about me. So you're a, an astrophysicist, which is impressive just as a name, like as a profession, as a career. Uh, and you have basically two jobs. Right. You are uh, once a week at UCLA working on very sensitive instrumentation uh, with a team, with a grant, government grant, to research dark matter, which is one of the biggest question marks remaining in the scientific, scientific field. I mean, that, that's how mm -hmm. I understand it. <laughs> that's and, pretty accurate. Okay, good. Um, and you, it's a long, obviously, just like Hollywood, movies take a whole long, incredibly long time to, to make. This kind of process, this project you're working on has been in the works for probably five years already or a couple of years at least. I know there's a couple of years to go. and That's at least a decade. My, okay. I, I started working on it in 2012. I, All right. I was going to say a decade, but I, I <laughs> decided to, you know. Be, be small, yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, and and you've told me that if you if the experiment is successful, basically you're, uh, a very sensitive piece of equipment is going to go up in the atmosphere on a balloon, and it's going to hopefully catch some gamma particles or something that that will help determine what dark matter is. And if if the experiment is successful, you could be up for a Nobel Prize in physics at some point as a possibility. A no, not me, but the guy who's ahead of the project, yes. Yeah, so. Well, you'll be associated with them. Yeah, I can say, hey, I know that guy, so. All right, so that's this guy. <laughs> that's one of his jobs. The other job is the rest of his time you're at, well, I, I imagine many of you already know, it's Reasons to Believe, mm -hmm. which is a, an apologetics ministry that, <laughs> the way I refer to it, I think this place is uh, doing some of the most important work on the planet, uh, honestly, that uh, especially in combating or correcting, uh, in particular, a lot of Christians, what I would say is misunderstandings of, of what the Bible says about the universe we live in. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about progressive creationism versus uh, young earth creationism. Mm -hmm. uh, I think even though your the audience that believes in young in progressive creationism, old earth creationism versus young earth creationism, is much smaller. Uh, at least in the evangel, I don't know. I could be wrong at, at, uh, in these ratios, but just because there are fewer people that understand, or and maybe I'm wrong, but that that adhere to progressive creationism. In other words, the universe is as old as science says it is, uh, that it's not uh, six literal 24-hour periods, et cetera, or seven, whatever. Um, I think that truth, that knowledge in time, the work that you guys are doing here will actually have a global impact uh, and it's part of my eschatology. We'll get into that as well. So, <laughs> so you have two jobs. You're a scientist and a theologian? A scholar of some scholar. sort. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'd put myself in the theologian class, except I think we're all theologians. We're just, some are better than others, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to say, it's really interesting listening to your description because, one, it helps me understand how well I've communicated what I do. Uh, but two, it helps me understand what people perceive that we do. And, uh, you know, as I would say uh, there are ways I would say it differently, but I, I appreciate what you have to say. And so, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, you can tell me what I do for a living and then we'll tell you what we're really doing. <laughs> 